Hello, I'm Dr. Cynthia Morris. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for joining this, uh, this program. Uh, I pray that you will be blessed, you and your family. So we are talking about uh, seven things out of eight that you can do to have peace in your heart and in your homes. And we're looking at the Holy Spirit's role in that. Amen. So number seven, we said is that we have to listen to and we have to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Say that with me. I must listen to and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit if I want peace in my heart and in my home. Really, in everything that you want, you're going to have to listen to and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Again, this is His dispensation. Amen. This is His ministry, the present day ministry of the Holy Spirit. And all of us, we all need His help and His guidance. Praise God. All of us do. Amen. So I want you to go over to John 15, 26. And we're going to be talking today about who is the Holy Spirit, all the different roles and that he, uh, that he uh, occupies. Amen. And, and really, there's so much that he can accomplish in our lives that we will permit him to do so. Amen. He only comes where he's welcome. Are you welcoming him in your situations? Are you inviting him to invade your, your, your circumstances? You know, are you seeking him out to, to get the, just the, man, the, just the, in, 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 just, a vast reservoir of wisdom that he possesses, the knowledge that he possesses, and then that we can, we can tap into and we can pull into our own lives that can bring God's solutions to our situations. We need that. I need that. I will just acknowledge that I need that, and I know that you do as well. Amen? So let's pray very quickly, and then we're going to get right back into the teaching. This is blessing me. I love the Holy Spirit, and I need Him, and I know you feel the same. Praise God. So God, thank you. Thank you for everything that you're going to accomplish uh, this morning. Thank you for expanding our capacity to be able to receive this Word. Thank you, Lord God, that we'll not just be hearers, but doers of the Word, and because of that, we'll be blessed in all that we do. And it's in Jesus' name, sir, I pray. Amen. Amen. So who exactly is the Holy Spirit? Amen. Who is the Holy Spirit? So the Holy Spirit is a person. He is a person. Again, as I mentioned before, he's not a thing. He's not a feeling. He's not a goosebump. He's not a tongue. Amen. He is a person. The Holy Spirit is the third part of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. So he's the third part of the Godhead. He was sent to earth after Jesus ascended to heaven following the resurrection for the sole purpose of helping. The sole purpose, his sole purpose for being here is to help us. Amen. And if you're smart, you will allow him to help you in any way that he desires because he only, he only desires good things for you and for your family. Whatever it is that God desires for you and your family, that's what the Holy Spirit wants to manifest in your life. Amen. So John 15, 26, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but turn to John 15, 26. It says, but when the helper comes, talking about the Holy Spirit, whom I shall send, this is Jesus, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is really identified in seven ways. Amen. If you look in, if you read your Bible and look at the commentary and look in the Greek and in the Hebrew and all of that, but it really breaks it down very nicely. So number one, he's a counselor. He's a counselor. He gives us direction. He gives us advice and he leads us. He leads us. Number two, he's a comforter. You know, he's, he's, he's called to comfort us. The Holy Ghost will, will cover you with this comfort during difficult times. He wants to comfort your heart. Amen. He is a strengthener. The Holy Spirit gives us strength to endure the hostility of this world system. You know, I tell you, it's, it, it could be tough living on this planet without Christ. I don't know how people make it without a relationship with God. And quite honestly, they don't. There's no way that you can survive this world and the direction that it's going. If you're not in relationship with God, if you're not born of his spirit, filled with his spirit, amen, and led by his spirit. So you're just not going to make it. You're not going to make it and your family's not going to make it. Amen. But again, everything starts with the, with the relationship. So the Holy Spirit will give you the strength. He will give you the endurance that you need. Amen. So you're able to persist and, and, and stand up against and overcome the hostility that is embedded in this world system because of the God of this world system, Satan. Amen. 
It even tells us over in Jude, and I'll read Jude 20 in a second. It tells us that it tells us to build up our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. This is what Jude 20 says. So if you're if you are weak, if you're feeling weak, then perhaps you need to charge up your spiritual battery by praying in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues, spending time in the presence of the Spirit of God. Guys, the less the less time we spend with God. The less time we spend in his presence, the less power we'll have. The less, the less time we spend in the word of God, the weaker we will become. Because that's where, that's where your power lies. That's the power source. He's the power source. So if you want to continue to walk in the power of God, amen, like Jesus, when he came out of the wilderness, he, the Bible says he came out in the power of the spirit. And he overcame every temptation that Satan set before him. Amen. Every single one. He walked out in the power of the spirit. You, you're going to need the power of the Holy Ghost. Again, Jude 20 says, but you, beloved, building up yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. He's also called the advocate. According to the King James Version Dictionary, it means one who defends, who vindicates, or espouses a cause by argument, one who is friendly to, oh, check this out, an advocate for peace or for the oppressed. Amen. So he's come to advocate for you. Amen. He's also the intercessor. One of my favorite things about the Holy Spirit, he's an intercessor. I love to pray. I love praying. Prayer is important. Whether you pray in tongues or pray in English, but you should be praying. Amen. You should be praying. So he's called, so he is called the intercessor. He helps us to pray. He's not going to do our praying for us. Amen. We're going to look at that in a minute, but he helps us to pray. He helps us to pray the perfect will of God and we will yield ourselves to him. Let's look at Romans 8, 26 through 27. I know you guys all know this scripture very well. It states, likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses. When you're weak, you need to get into the spirit. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to die. If you speak, if you sow to the spirit, you're going to live. Life everlasting. For we do not know what we should pray as we ought. Let me stop right there. There's sometimes, guys, I don't know how to pray for something. And neither do you. And that's why God has given us his spirit so he can show us and tell us and pray through us. Help us to pray. What is the perfect will of God? What is God's perfect will? Because we don't always know. And that's why we have to get God's heart. God has to show us through his spirit. Here's what you should pray. And here's how you should pray. I can't tell you how many times when I had situations that come up and I've learned over the years, I say, okay, Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm just going to pray. I'm going to trust that you're going to come alongside and pray with me. Sometimes I pray in tongues. Sometimes I pray in English. A lot of times also when I'm praying, I say, Holy Spirit, you give me a rainbow word that I can incorporate into my prayer. It never fails. He always gives me something. And typically it's always something that I've already read in the Bible that he pulls up out of me. He brings it back to my remembrance. And then I latch on to that word and I incorporate that into my prayer. And I continue to say it with thanksgiving over and over and over and over until the will of God is manifested in that situation. Amen. It works. It works. There is no failure in God. God's words and, and ways work every single time. So we do not know what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Spirit of God knows the will of God. He's the third part of the Godhead. When we connect ourselves with him and when we, we allow him to come alongside us and help us to pray, then we're going to be able to birth through intercession and through prayer what God's will is for us in our situation. There are things that the spirit of God can pray through me and work through me that I wouldn't get in a gazillion years if I was just doing it by myself. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Spirit. And if you're not allowing the Spirit to work through you in your home, guys, you need to be allowing the Spirit of God to help you to pray over your home. Get into your home. Start walking through your house. Allow the Spirit of God to reveal to you. Say, reveal to me and show me, Holy Ghost, what is it that I need to be confessing and praying over my family? What's going on with my son? What's going on with my daughter? What's going on with my husband, my wife? 
What's going on in my church for you pastors out there? What's going on in my business if you're a businessman or woman? What's going on, God? What's going on, Holy Ghost? You show me what that is, and then you show me how I should attack this thing. See, I tell you, the Holy, the Holy Spirit is a master at that. He does it so well. He knows. He knows what's going on, and he knows how to fix it. Amen. He knows how to fix it. I'm telling you. So trust him. He's also called the standby. Come to stand alongside of us. The helper, number seven. That, again, that Greek word helper is called paraclete. The parakletos, which is defined, what, defined as one that's called alongside to help. One that is called to offer support to you. Amen. He's your support system. He's called alongside to help you. Don't turn that help down. Don't quench the spirit of God. Don't grieve the spirit of God. Don't dismiss him. Amen. It's amazing to me how dismissive people are toward the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about people in their homes and I'm talking about even in churches I go to where we just dismiss what the Spirit of God is doing. And I believe mainly because we don't really have the sensitivity that we need to have. We can't recognize when he's moving because we don't spend enough time with him to really know and understand him, to know his voice, to sense his leading, amen, and to become accustomed to and in tune with his presence. I want, I don't know about you, but I want that more than anything. Amen. So he's called alongside to help. He's called alongside to offer support. To help who? To help you. Help you. To help your family. Again, Jesus did not leave us comfortless. He sent you help. I don't care how helpless you feel right now. You are not alone. The whole, you have the Holy Spirit. He is there to help you. He is there to support you. But it's up to you. It's up to me. Amen. To desire, to seek, and to welcome the Holy Spirit into our lives and into our families. Again, he's not going to go anywhere where he is not welcome. Unfortunately, a lot of people's families and a lot of people's churches, the Holy Spirit is an unwelcome guest. And that's why many of us, we're failing mis miserably. Because we think that we are smarter than him. We think in stuff that we know more than he knows. I'm telling you, start running to people and start running to the Lord. Start getting on your face before the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I need your help. I acknowledge you. I accept you. I appreciate you. I'm going to act on whatever it is that you tell me to do because I cannot do this by myself in the name of Jesus. I cannot. So it's up to you to receive and to act upon the guidance that he gives you. Amen. So that way you can get, he can get you to where you need to be. You need his ministry and you need his presence in your lives. There is no substitute for the Holy Spirit, none. So in closing very quickly, become a part of the Gideon 300. I know the Spirit of God is speaking to people's hearts. You start giving to these ministries, whether it's KPLE, to your local church, wherever. We need you to support the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ so we can cover the world with this word. This is it, guys. God is wrapping it up and we need everybody giving into the work of the ministry, amen? If you're not a part of a local church, let the Spirit of God lead you where He wants you to be. Listen to where He's telling you to go and then where He's leading you and then follow that lead and go there where you can be planted and you can grow, where you can give and you can receive. Amen. I love you. God bless you. And we'll see you next week.